Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and coming up here on today's show, we're going to get into the top trending stories around the silver and black. We're going to talk about Tom Brady. I'm going to talk about Josh McDaniels. We will talk about Rob Gronkowski on top of that. But before we get into all of that, I love Raider Nation. Y'all are my family. But yesterday, man, there was probably one of the craziest things I've ever seen on Monday Night Football, and I just want to say prayers out to DeMar Hamlin. Prayers to his family, a young man who is really making a great name for himself in the National Football League, a do-it-all type of player. I mean, you're looking at those numbers that you see on screen, but for the type of player that he is on the field, when you see some of the stuff that this young man is doing off the field, it just makes your heart break even more. And I know I always say this, you don't have to be blood to be family. Yesterday showed me the NFL that there was a lot of people, they might not be blood, but man, they are family. This is what the Buffalo Bills had to say. DeMar Hamlin suffered a cardiac arrest following a hit in our game versus the Bengals. His heartbeat was restored on the field and was transferred to the UC Medical Center for further testing and treatment. He is currently sedated and listed in critical condition. The Las Vegas Raiders, once this happened, they tweeted out sending our prayers to DeMar Hamlin and his family. And actually, all 32 NFL teams have changed their profile pictures to pray for DeMar with his number on that, which I think is an amazing thing. Yesterday... This picture started to go viral, which you see all these different NFL teams, players showing their love for DeMar, uh, an unbelievably scary, scary scene. The Bills team, the Bengals team knelt down on the field in prayer. I, 2020 was a hell of a year. And when you see a picture like this, this honestly just restores a lot of my faith in humanity. When you got Bengals fans, when you got Bills fans joining outside of the hospital in a prayer for a player, I mean, this is incredible. I mean, these people, you know, you got some people that fly into these games. You got people that travel with their families and they're ready to rock and roll. It's a Monday night football game. And to be able to step away from being a fan and then just being a human being, really powerful stuff. This is uh, what the... Buffalo Bills posted here from the family of DeMar Hamlin. On behalf of our family, we want to express our sincere gratitude for the love and support shown to DeMar during this challenging time. We are deeply moved by the prayers, kind words, and donations from fans around the country. We also want to acknowledge the dedicated first responders and healthcare professionals at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center who have provided exceptional care to DeMar. We feel so blessed to be a part of the Buffalo Bills organization and have their support. We also want to thank Coach Taylor and the Bengals for everything they've done your generosity and compassion mean the world to us please keep damar in your prayers we will release updates as soon as we have them so here on the raiders report we're actually going to put it down in the comments and it's going to be in the description of today's show if you get a second Read how amazing this man is, DeMar Hamlin. I mean, when you look at the charity that he has, the GoFundMe, GoFundMe link again, description and the comments. But DeMar created the Chasing M's Foundation to use as a vehicle to bring lasting impact to his community. The foundation supports toy drives, back-to-school drives, kid camps, and more. I mean, this is also in the GoFundMe. As I remark on my journey, this is what, again, DeMar had to say. As I embark on my journey to the NFL, and he put this out in 2020, I will never forget where I came from, and I am committed to using my platform to positively impact the community that raised me. I created the Chasing M's Foundation as a vehicle that will allow me to deliver the, that impact. And the first program is the 2020 Community Toy Drive. This campaign gives you the opportunity to contribute to our first initiative and uh, positively impact children who have been hardest hit by the pandemic. 100% of the funds raised will go towards the purchase of toys for kids in need. That is an amazing, amazing human being. And DeMar, man, I've never shaken your hand, but just know me, my entire chat sports family here, my family, we watched the game last night. I sat down with Alex, her mom, her sister. We always do this. We do this. Uh, Thing every single New Year's where you get 12 grapes and every single grape when you eat it you got to pray you got to make a wish we all sat down we made a wish for you that you heal up quickly Raider Nation send your love to this young man here because again you don't got to be blood to be family Damar we're pulling for you man all right y'all coming up now here we are going to get into some rumors around the silver and black but I just felt like I had to do that some things are bigger than football, and I think we can all agree on that. So now let's talk about the top trending rumors around the silver and black. Tom Brady, is he going to the Raiders? I mean, I am an honest-to-God person, 
And this is what I always try to do. I try to give it to you straight. I find top trending stories out there and I give my opinion. This one is two just win babies. It's a coin flip. And for anything, in my opinion, to be a coin flip on a player who's not even on the team joining the team, that should speak volumes to you right now. Hondo Carpenter. I saw in a mailbag, he was talking about Brady, and somebody asked him, all right, what are the percentage of chance of Brady joining the Silver and Black? Hondo straight up said that there's a 40% chance that Brady comes to Las Vegas. I got to give my flowers to Hondo because every single person that covers the Raiders in the offseason was talking Harbaugh. They were talking all these different coaches, and Hondo was like, no, McDaniels is the guy. I think Hondo is pretty well connected in the whole McDaniel situation over there with Ziegler. Brady's going to be a free agent in 2023. So if Hondo's giving it a 40% and the sources who I talk to are giving me the percentages that they're giving me, it's got to be two just win babies. So this is the exact quote from Hondo on the possibility of Brady joining Las Vegas. 40%. Tom Brady, the GOAT, knows the system, is great friends with McDaniels, and he would instantly instantly sees the locker room he will be a free agent but if successful in 2023 he could make another one year decision to come back in 2024 my personal opinion from people who i talk to around the league it sounds like it is either the las vegas raiders the miami dolphins and the reason why somebody told me the dolphins is because of his great relationship with stephen ross but that would require Tua tongue of Iloa retiring because he had three concussions the Dolphins are a sneaky team for Tom Brady in 2023, or he does. He decides to hang up the cleats. He goes to, I believe, what, Fox, where he's got 10 years, $357 million waiting for him after he retires from football. This is what the Athletic had to say on Tom Brady. There's buzz in the league circles that Brady is lining up places where he wants to go next season. Brady contract voids after this year. The Raiders could provide a natural landing spot with Brady's former New England offensive coordinator, Josh McDaniels, in place as Las Vegas head coach. So let's be real with each other. That's what we do. Family is real with each other. Raider Nation, I know y'all are never a shy in the comments section. Be real with me. Do you want Brady on the Raiders? Do you want Brady repping that shield? Do you want him in the silver and black? I mean, there is a lot that players at times do not take for, they don't appreciate what it means to put on a Raiders jersey. And I take a lot of pride in that. I wear these colors almost every single day. So give me a Y for yes. Give me an N for no. Do you want Brady on the Las Vegas Raiders? My take on that is this. I care about winning. Al Davis said just win, baby. Is Al Davis maybe turning in his grave a little bit how the Raiders are kind of turning into the Patriots? I'm not going to speculate. But I know all Al ever cared about was winning. And if Tom Brady helps the Raiders win, I'm good with it. If you bring Brady in and you lose, well, then guess what? See you, Josh McDaniels, and then you're going to start all over again. You bring Brady in and you win football games. I know this. I'm a lot happier <laughs> after a Raiders win than when the Raiders lose. But just because you're bringing Tom Brady in, I tweeted this out. If you haven't already seen it, go to my Twitter at MitchellRens365. But this is where I said, I believe bringing in Brady is the best long-term and short-term answer. Just because you're bringing in Brady in, that does not mean that you don't try to bring in a young quarterback underneath him to develop. I trust Tom Brady to develop a quarterback more than I trust Josh McDaniels right now. So for me, there are three quarterbacks in the draft that I believe realistically could land on the silver and black. And there's two other quarterbacks that, yes, you'd have to trade for, but I would at least be interested in entertaining the idea of a trade. C.J. Stroud, Will Levis, Anthony Richardson. You let two guys that have a lot of high upside and Will Levis shit, even C.J. Stroud, you let them learn underneath Tom Brady for a year. You say bon voyage to Brady in 2024, hand the keys over to one of these three guys. We saw how much of a mobile quarterback Jarrett Stidham, and he ain't even that mobile. He's, he's athletic. He is not that mobile. How much having a mobile quarterback makes your offense look better with McDaniels. And then on top of that, Jordan Love. He's got two years left on his deal. It's still a cheap deal. He was a first-round pick. Malik Willis. I had Malik Willis as my number one quarterback. He's looked bad in Tennessee. But Mike Vrabel and Dave Ziegler have an incredible, incredible relationship. The fact that they took him in the third round. I mean, if you're telling me I can get Jordan Love or Malik Willis for a fifth or a sixth-round pick, let those two guys learn underneath Brady, that's what I want. I don't want just Brady. Bring in Brady and let a quarterback learn 
underneath them. All right, y'all, today's show presented by Rocket Money. Don't waste your money. Use Rocket Money. It's a free app. Go download it right now at the link that you see right here, rocketmoney.com slash LB Raiders. I'm going to tell you how easy it is to get started and why you're going to absolutely love it. The app shows you all your subscriptions in one place, and it cancels for you whatever you don't still want. Rocket Money can even find subscriptions you didn't even know you were paying for. You may even find out you've been double charged for a subscription. To cancel a subscription, all you have to do is press cancel, and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash LVRaider. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash LVRaiders. Before the show started, Jeremy and I, we were sitting down, we were comparing Rocket Money apps, you know what I'm talking about, and we were like looking at how much money we spend on shopping, how much money we spend on food. I also realized that I spend over two grand on Chuck this year, so I was like, Chuck, you better start doing a little bit more work to get your money around. Bottom line is this, Rocket Money doesn't only help you with subscriptions, it also... Uh, it helps you see what you're spending your money on. I'm not going to repeat what you said. <laughs> Let's go to the next story here on the Raiders report. Do you trust Josh McDaniels to find a quarterback? Like, that's an honest question, right? We moved on from Derek Carr. You're, the plan now is to move on from number four, which means, as Raider fans, you need to be able to look yourself in the mirror and say... I trust Josh McDaniels to find a quarterback that's going to lead us to where we need to go. And every single year, there's one goal in mind. Super Bowl. So do you trust McDaniels to find a quarterback? No, I don't. It's only one just win, baby. When you go look at the history of quarterbacks that Josh McDaniels has been either the head coach of or the offensive coordinator of, it has not been good. Those QBs have not had a lot of success. I can honestly sit down and say only... Two quarterbacks, realistically, for an entire season, played well. And that's Tom Brady, and I am going to give some credit to Mac Jones, who I thought looked pretty dang good in his rookie year. Did Jimmy Garoppolo have good st stints? Yes, he did. Did Matt Castle win games? Yes, he did. But Matt Castle did not put up very good numbers. So for me, I'm looking at the sheet. I'm looking at all the quarterbacks that he's had. He's had Tim Tebow. He's had Kyle Orton. He's had Matt Castle. There's been numerous quarterbacks that have not played well. But most importantly, it's the play of a guy like Derek Carr, who, let's just be real with ourselves, the numbers here on screen aren't 100% aren't updated, but it's 24 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, 60.8% completion percentage. Derek really, really struggled this year. No doubt about it. And the biggest reason why I want Brady for 2023 is to groom a young quarterback because I just, I can't trust McDaniels yet. Once he starts winning more games, sure. But people are like, oh, Mitch, it's only one year. I go back, I look at Denver. I look at what he did to Indianapolis. I look at what he did to the Las Vegas Raiders in 2022. I saw some beat reporters saying that the Raiders had way too high of expectations. I disagree. My expectations this year, after a 10-7 and 7 season where I believe that we improved, was playoffs. We didn't reach those expectations. So for that, I, it's really, really hard for me to sit up here and say, I trust McDaniels. You know who I do trust, though? You can like him or not. If you don't trust Tom Brady, I think you're crazy. And the fact that some people are like, oh, he's washed up. He just had a hell of a game, 420-something yards, four total touchdowns. And if you think for a second that an NFL team wants to play this man in December, January, God forbid, in the biggest game of them all in the Super Bowl, I don't care if he's 100 years old. That eh, might be different. If he's at 45, 46, 47, there's no NFL team out there that wants to face this man because at the end of the day, he's the GOAT. Whether you like that or not, that's the GOAT. And if you can get him on your team, I think you got to try to do it. Now, I know it's going to be a crazy offseason. I, I, the the, the offseason we had last offseason with the Devontae Adams trades, the draft's going to be crazier this year. The quarterback rumors that are going to be out there. If big time news happens, I'll keep you updated. I got the best team, I believe, on the internet with Jeremy Chugs, Chat Sports, whoever it is. When big time stuff happens, if it's super big, giggity, we're going to go live. So hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, because I don't want you to miss anything. Next story coming up here on the show, Gronk to the Raiders. Gronk to the Raiders. If Brady's two just win babies... This one right here with Gronk, it's only one. And I'm going to say it's 25%. Could that number go up? Yeah, it, it absolutely could. Gronk is retired right now. 
back on December 21st, which we talked about here on the show here and there. He said, I'm kind of bored. Internet blew up because it's Rob Gronkowski. They're like, oh, man, the Bucs were struggling. Could he rejoin Tom Brady? I'll tell you this right now. If Brady comes to Las Vegas, Gronk to the Raiders goes from one, you can almost double those odds and make it 50%. Gronk and Brady are great friends. They've played a lot of very successful games together. They've won, I believe, three or four Super Bowls together. And guess what? The Raiders, they've always wanted to run this two tight end system. Gronk could still do it at 33 years old. However, though, here's what Gronk had to say on the I'm kind of bored tweet. Shout out to Jeremy for picking the picture in the background because it fits almost too well. I barely tweet, actually. I'm kind of bored. People took that to mean I was coming back to football right away. It was mind-blowing. Actually, how my agent hit me up, two teams hit me up. Just crazy. My friends actually were hitting me up too. Like, bro, are you really going back to football? I don't see that happening. I was like, you know, I'm not. Here's the thing. If you look at that quote and rewind if you have to on YouTube, he says two teams. It has already been confirmed that Todd Bowles, the Buccaneers head coach, at least reached out to him. It has yet to be confirmed who that other team was. It might have been New England. But man, there is a real part of me that says, again, if I'm taking my chips here in Vegas and I'm going to bet on which team I think reached out to Gronk, I think it was the Raiders, Dave Ziegler, Josh McDaniels. And also, you can't forget all the saga back in 2020. Dana White spoke about it this offseason when Brady and Gronk were apparently going to join Las Vegas. This is what Dana White had to say. I worked to put that deal together for Brady and Gronk to come to the Raiders. It was almost a done deal. And at last minute, Gruden blew the deal up and said that he didn't want him. And hell broke loose. Man, it was crazy. The most popular video I've ever put out that wasn't a live show was actually Tom Brady might buy a house in Las Vegas. And this is what White had to say on that. And Brady was already looking at houses. It wasn't said yet that Gronk was going to be coming. So Las Vegas would have had Brady and Gronk the year the Bucks won the Super Bowl. Except Gruden blew the deal up. At the end of the day, what have we learned as Raider fans? If Mark Davis wants to do something, he's going to do it. If you don't think that the hiring of McDaniels, Ziegler... And then on top of Mark Davis, that's three. Those are the three guys that make the most decisions. And if they want Gronk, if they want Tom Brady, if they want a reunion, they're simply going to do it. I'm sorry. They're going to handle it as a business. Look at what the whole Derek Carr situation. They're going to handle it like a business. Now, the other reason why this is intriguing is because Foster Moreau, he's going to be a free agent. I do not anticipate the Raiders bringing back Foster, so which means you need some extra tight ends. You only got Darren Waller. Darren Waller, Rob Gronkowski, it would be a pretty darn good duo if you ask me. If Brady joins the Raiders, I believe Gronk is going to join also. And if that does happen... If you can find veteran players that have been there, done that, that fit a seam, that can help build a locker room, that's what I'm here for. I am here for winning. Always remember that. So when you talk about Gronk, when you talk about Foster Moreau, who's the better tight end? Since Foster's a free agent and Gronk would technically come out of retirement, who would you invest your money in? Type FM for Foster Moreau, or if you believe it's Gronk, I want you to type RG. No disrespect to Moreau, but it's Gronk. If, if, if Rob Gronkowski, arguably the greatest tight end of all time, and when I think of my top tight ends, I hold your ears. Travis Kelsey deserves to be in that list. Rob Gronkowski deserves to be in that list. Tony Gonzalez, that's probably my top three. But from a dominant standpoint, at the ultimate peak, I don't think there's ever been a tight end more dominant at their peak than Gronk. Are you going to get Gronk at his peak? No, you're not. If he is healthy, though, and he showed you just back in 2021 in 12 games, 55 catches on 89 targets, 802 yards, and six touchdowns. Gronk and Brady have rapport, but he's also a hell of a red zone option. And if you got Devontae Adams, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, Rob Gronkowski, Good luck, man. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to be a defensive coordinator in the red zone because we can move the football all we want, but until you start scoring in the red zone, that, it just doesn't matter anymore. So, y'all, we're going to put a bow on today's show. If you haven't already, hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. 
That's where I'm at. Y'all know where to get me. Locals, RaidersReport.Locals.com. And again, reminder, we are putting the DeMar Hamlin link in the comments and in the description. So if you want to support him, his charity, and his family, I encourage you. I encourage your family. I encourage all of Raider Nation to do that because some things are bigger than football. And again, you don't have to be blood to be family. So DeMar... Prayers for you, ma'am. We're, we're really pulling for you here on the Raiders Report.